Welcome back for another episode of Tank's Tank. Today, wheel studs and right, spacers. So it's the day before Thanksgiving, and I've got the day off, so we're going to do a bunch of projects on the Bronco. And we're going to start with replacing the wheel studs on the rear wheels and putting the wheel spacers all four around. Uh, I'm waiting on the auxiliary shocks that I'll be installing. They go right in here. I'm getting them from BDS. They come in today. Just don't know when. So we'll be installing those. And then I got boots to put on those shocks as well. So we'll be doing that. And then once that's all done, we're going to be replacing the heater core. So I'll show kind of step by step. And I'm using a couple of tips that I've gotten from Chris Fix. Like him, go step by step on everything he does. Really good YouTuber on working on car stuff give him a shout out all right so why am I replacing the wheel studs well because I snapped that one off and I think there's another one on this one that is stripped I think it's that one and then I've got one on the other side as well so the first thing we're gonna do we're gonna break them uh, get them loosened up and then we'll get it off the ground to get the tires off so we got whoops we got our black lug nuts, splinter lug nuts. We got those. We're going to use those to put everything on. And then these are the wheel spacers, one inch wheel spacers. And so they're going to go on like that. And then they secure to the existing studs with these bolt lugs. And then these here. The new lug nuts go on to just like so and then we got the replacement studs and the installer so let's get these tires off tires are off drums are off you can see I did the my drum overhaul yes uh, a couple weeks ago. Things look like they're still good, so I'm gonna clean this up a little bit just with a brush uh, after we get the strip studs out. But there, this one here, you can see it's been cross-threaded, and then it you know now the lug doesn't get all the way on there. So we're going to pull that one out. The rest look good. And double check the nuts for the spacers. Make sure that they're going to fit. I've got my BFH here. And if I can't get it out with that, I've got my air hammer there. These wheel studs just press in and knock out. So with my big hammer, Boom. So I'm going to use the air hammer. I think it's going to go a little bit faster. It's a lot louder. Rotate this down. Clearly it's not working the way I want to, so we're going to see if I can't use a different bit. Air hammer's not going to work, so big hammer it is. All five are out. Let's get new ones back in. 
this is supposed to be a relatively easy process. Just push the bolt through this way. And then this piece here, this is the installer. It just goes over the top. I'm taking one of my old acorn lugs and it twists on there and it just pulls it in. So I just got it on there hand tight. I quiet in. Good, let's get this off. Nice and flush. New studs in. We'll do that four more times. I skipped ahead a few steps, so uh, on the other side I'll show you, but I've got it all installed, the spacer installed, all five uh, new wheel studs are in, got the spacer on, everything's torqued down to 85 foot-pounds, it's uh, factory specs, so now we'll put the wheel back on. Back on the passenger side, so, or I'm sorry, this is the driver's side that has the broken stud, we're going to take all those off now. All five studs out over here. Uh, just got done getting as much of the rust off the, the flange as, much, uh, as I possibly could. It actually looks, I think, pretty good. You know, as close to new as you're going to get for a 22-year-old, 23-year-old truck. I'm going to give it one more shot with some brake clean and then we'll get the new studs put in. Let that dry real quick and then we'll get going. So here we go. All right, so we're back on, and unbeknownst to everybody out there in YouTube world, but uh, I'm delayed by two and a half hours here because this took a crap on me. And after talking to the guy at AutoZone, not where I bought it, but he said, just smack it. Well, I smacked it, and it didn't necessarily work. So we went back. We got an upgrade and some other things that we needed anyway. So now we're back at it and time to put on the one inch spacer and I promised I was going to show you guys how we did that. So first I'm going to put on some anti-seize lubricant on the drum. We've got to put the drum back on first. Uh, but after one of the issues was when I put the new stud in this one here it that one the nut cross-threaded nasty it was nasty i can show you it nice picture of a glove there so look at that that's how bad that's how bad it cross-threaded and that was coming out so somehow this nice little lug nut twisted while I was trying to get it off 
and so it got all eaten up. So at the parts store, of course, I got one that was close, right? <laughs> Not likely. Look at the difference there. So I got this one, and that one's shorter. Hopefully it works. Hopefully it's still a 19. These are all 19 millimeters. I don't think this is going to be 19 millimeters. It looks a little bit bigger, but we'll see. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little bit of this anti-seize on this paper towel. Of course, I don't have anything sophisticated enough like a brush, but just a little bit of the anti-seize. And we're going to put this on the actual wheel flange here so that the spacer does not lock up, rust to, whatever. Oh, dang it. Look at that. I messed this up. Guess what needs to go on first? That. Not the end of the world. I'm just going to wipe some of this off. People put anti-seize on this anyway, so that their drums don't lock up. So, you can do that. Here, look at that. Alright, so let's put the drum on, the way I'm supposed to. So now that the drum's back on, let's go ahead and... Rub some of this anti seize in here. This is mostly where the spacer is gonna touch. Keep some of this stuff from rubbing. You can see in the paint already where the wheel was touching it. So, and then the spacer goes right over just like that. All right. And then it comes with these provided nuts, and of course, it's one of these lug nuts that I screwed up, so we'll have to see if the other lug nut that I got will work. I'd prefer not to have to use the one that's larger, but is shallower. So, if I can get that one, I think we're going to be okay, though, because you can see the wheel stud here sticks out past this so I think I'll be all right using that bigger one so I'm gonna get these on and we'll come back all right so they're all in there kind of hand tight my nice new beautiful 19 millimeter uh, impact socket doesn't fit in here so I had to get my So now I'm going to wipe off the lubrication, anti seize lube that is just up here just to make it pretty. It's got to be pretty, right? And then we're going to torque them down to 85 foot pounds, which is uh, what you're supposed to torque down to the factory specs. And then we'll get, we can mount the wheels. But that's all going to wait until I can get the boots for the shocks because I don't want to take the wheels off again when the shocks come in. And they're due any time now. And now we're here on the front. This is the front passenger. Uh, BDS shock, springs. That's the, <laughs> the control arm. Not the control the radius arm. Wow, it's been a long day. So we're going to clean this up, the brakes look good, I don't have to worry about the brakes, calipers, these calipers will probably end up having to be rotated and uh, smoothed out and turned when that time comes, but we're going to clean this up, clean this up, and then we'll clean up our wheel studs here. The front wheel studs do not need to be replaced, thank goodness, because that is a mess. Uh, but we're going to clean this up. That's 22 years of grime. And then we're going to get the wheel spacer on the front. And then 
I've got the auxiliary shock that's due in with my boots, so that will we'll go in there as well. And we'll come back after this is cleaned up. Finished cleaning it, well, as much as my patience would allow, but I think it came out looking pretty darn good compared to what it was. I did use my brush just a little bit on the caliper, but I'm just kind of playing with it. When it comes time to change the brakes, I'll be painting the caliper and putting in extended brake lines in anyway. So, but UPS got here. So, let's go check out little unboxing for you, unscheduled unboxing. We got our boots and our new BDS shocks. So at first glance, that looks like the wrong picture of the box. What I'm supposed to have gotten. Let's hope it's the right one. I ordered the auxiliary. It's supposed to go in there. That way, I see one hole. Uh, not post! We are good to go. Alright, so we can put those in. I will get those in as soon as I get the wheel spacers in. And we'll be going. So after a ton of work to get that sleeve in, and get everything put together, come to find out, one, trying to get the bottom in, to this here super super tight and I'm working it working it, working it, and then I'm like huh it doesn't line up right this has to be over more so that the shock is here so as you see it's it's that far off I don't have anything big enough we installed this at Pro Motorsports I don't have anything big enough to loosen this up so that we can move this. So these auxiliary shocks are going to have to wait. In the meantime, I can put the boots on everything else. So that's what we're going to do. Right. See, got much more space here now. And we're on the ground. We're torqued up to the factory specs. Got the black lugs in there, spliner nuts. A little bit of space here. And obviously it's because the rim can't go all the way back over the hub now. So just my only concern with it, but otherwise I think it looks good. We'll see what happens with the Alright, it was dark last night when I was finishing up. And so I got the tires back on and it's all the spacers in. Can't see much, a little bit of a difference there on where they are now. They're sitting just outside the, the fender well. So it doesn't look bad. Today we'll get the heater core changed out and get the last two boots on the back. Well, thanks for watching, and if you liked it and it was helpful, hit the like button and subscribe for more videos. See you guys around.